This is the third lecture on waves. In the first lecture on waves, we made a distinction between the oscillation and the wave. The oscillation of a particle is about its mean position, whereas the mean position is fixed, whereas wave is a disturbance which travels in the medium. We also learnt that there are waves which require a material medium to, tra to transmit or to propagate. These waves are called mechanical waves. On the other hand, there are waves like electromagnetic waves which do not require any medium for propagation. Then we learnt that there were two types of waves. Longitudinal waves in which the particles oscillate in the same direction as the propagation of the wave and transverse waves in which the particles oscillate in the direction perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. In the second lecture, we did some exercises, some examples and we also learnt the important concept of superposition of waves. If there are two waves which are travelling on the same string, let us say, in the same direction or in opposite directions, then they interfere and the result is that the displacement at each point can be added and sometimes the amplitude becomes large when we call constructive interference and sometimes the amplitude becomes very small what we call destructive interference. Today in this three third lecture on waves we shall consolidate first the concept of stationary waves which we learnt in the last one and then we go on to do some examples applying the concepts of waves so far that we have learnt. So, formation of standing waves on a string whose both ends are fixed we learnt takes place in a manner similar to the one explained already. What was the explanation? That there is a wave on the same string going in this direction, there is a wave on the same string going in the opposite direction and they interfere. When they interfere, they form what are known as standing waves. And standing waves on, on a string whose both ends are fixed take place in a manner similar to the one explained already. Both the fixed ends are nodes. You know, you remember node is a point on which there is no displacement. Antinode is a point where displacement can take place. So, both the fixed ends are nodes because no displacement can, can take place at those ends. And in between the two nodes, there is always an antinode. Let us see. We have here a string which is fixed at both the ends. As I said, both the ends are nodes and in between the two nodes, there must be an antinode. And the distance between these two nodes is equal to half the wavelength of the fundamental mode of vibration. And this vibrates first like this, then it goes like this, then it goes like this. And if there is this rapid up and down motion like this and like this, then we see as if a loop has been formed. Let us see. Here the wave goes up, here the wave goes down, here again up and down and this takes place with rapidity so that you see just one loop going like this and like this. As I have said earlier, between two consecutive nodes there must be an antinode. So, we have two nodes and then an antinode and the wavelength is equal to twice the length of this string because between two consecutive nodes, the distance is half the wavelength. Therefore, the, for the full wavelength, we will need twice that distance. And then there can be another mode. We have between two nodes, there is an antinode here and between these two nodes, there is an antinode here and then the vibration takes place like this. Again, since now there are, we, we have this node, this node, this node, the distance between this node and this node is one full wavelength. Therefore, lambda is equal to the length of the string. And then we can have the next mode where we have now four nodes between the two fixed ends and three antinodes and the wavelength now is 2 by 3 of the length of the string. If we talk of frequencies as we shall do now, let me show first of all the formation of this standing wave and these modes. 
In a similar manner, you can work out that a string fixed at one end and open at the other end will have the fundamental mode of vibration when its length is lambda by 4. First of all, let us see that. This is open end, therefore, this must be an antinode. This is a closed end, so must be a node. And the distance between node and antinode, the next antinode is always lambda by 4. So, this is one fourth of the, this length is one fourth of the wavelength. The next mode can be, there are two nodes and two antinodes like this and you can see the wavelength now is such that the length of the string is equal to 3 lambda by 4. The length is 3 fourth this half and 1 fourth 3 fourth of lambda. So, in this case the possible modes of vibration have frequencies m times the frequency of the fundamental where m has values 1, 3, 5. That is if the frequency of the fundamental mode is nu then of the second mode would be 3 nu and then 5 nu and so on. So, the frequencies of these fundamental and the harmonics go as 1, 3, 5. Uh, let me go back to this. When the string is closed at both the ends, then we have lambda is 2 L. When the next mode takes place, lambda is L. On the next mode, lambda is 2 by 3 L. And you find in this case that the frequency, which is V by lambda, is in the ratio of 1, 2, 3, 4. If the fundamental has frequency 1, the first harmonic has frequency 2, the third has a frequency 3 and so on. Nu, 2 nu, 3 nu, 4 nu. That is harmonics 1, 2, 3, 4 are all present. In this case, the harmonics only 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. are present, 2, 4, 6 are missing. The standing waves are formed wherever the incident and reflected waves interfere. That is two waves going in the opposite direction interfere. Standing waves are formed in pipes open at both ends or closed at both ends or open at one end and closed at the other. The thing to remember of course is that the open end of a pipe would be an antinode and the closed end of a pipe would be the node. So, if you remember this then you can just as on the strings you can see how these standing waves are formed. Here is the pipe closed at both ends and you have nodes at both ends in between there is an antinode and the length of the pipe is lambda by 2 or lambda is twice the length of the pipe. Here we have three nodes, the second mode of propagation and two antinodes in between and the wavelength now is equal to the length of the pipe. Now, if we go to the next mode, we have four nodes and three antinodes in between and we have now the length equal to three lambda by two. This is one lambda, this is half lambda, so three lambda by two. And therefore, the harmonic, if we go to the frequencies, harmonics of the fundamental are say fundamental frequency is nu, this is two nu, this is three nu and all harmonics one, two, three, four, five are present just like in the case of string fixed at both ends. Again, suppose pipe is open at both ends, then we have antinodes and a node in between and the length of the pipe in this case is equal to half the wavelength, one quarter here and one quarter here, so half the wavelength or lambda is equal to 2 L and in this case there are three loops, this is one full wavelength, one half, one quarter, one quarter, one full wavelength and therefore lambda is L. In this case you can see one full wavelength, one quarter, one quarter, three by two wavelengths and therefore, lambda I is equal to two by three times L. And again, as in the case of closed pipes, again the harmonics have frequencies which are two, three, four, five, six times the frequency of the fundamental. That is all harmonics, one, two, three, four, five are present just like in the case of closed pipes. This is a, an instrument with which you are all familiar this is a flute and flute is open at both ends and when a person blows air into this, then this starts vibrating, the air column inside starts vibrating and the pipe resonates with the fundamental 
and its harmonics you know all notes are produced fundamental and harmonics because of the vibrations of air column and the flute resonates to the frequencies which match its natural frequency so we have resonance with the fundamental and with some harmonics and it is the admixture of harmonics that produces a sound which is very pleasant a musical sound the player can change the effective length of the pipe you know look at these holes you must be familiar so the player can close or open these holes at will and change the frequency of vibration of the air column inside standing waves can form not only in pipes and strings but they can form in oceans you see wherever there are waves going in the opposite directions the standing waves can be formed they can form in the atmosphere they can form in on transmission lines and uh, in microwave cavities and so on students are sometimes mystified by the process of formation of standing waves you know why they think that if one wave is coming like this the other wave is going like this and everywhere they are out of phase and therefore therefore there is no displacement along the string at all and they are mystified how these strings break up into loops and form stand, standing waves to remove this mystery or confusion among students i am going to try to show you the formation of standing waves again just to consolidate because this is a difficult concept so i want to explain it again and we shall take the two waves at time t equal to 0 time t equal to t by 4 where t is the time period t equal to t by 2 t equal to 3 t by 4 and t equal to the full time period now look at this figure on the top we have wave going in this direction from left to right on the second figure we have waves going in the reverse direction that is going to the left and we shall see how these two waves interfere at time t equal to 0 let us say they are in phase and therefore the amplitude is very high just add the displacements and you will see the amplitude like this or displacement like this now after t by 4 remember that this is traveling this way so it will start after time t by 4 it will be here and this one going in this direction would be here so we have this wave going like this and this wave going like this and see they are out of phase wherever there is a maximum here minimum here there is a maximum there is a maximum here there is a minimum so the if we add the displacements you'll get zero displacement so here the displacement was maximum here zero here now after time t by 2 now you'll see waves will once again be in phase because this will have come here and this will have come here so you can see that this wave goes like this and this wave goes like goes like this in this direction and once again you can see that the displacements are added and you get large displacements out of phase with this here is a maximum of this here is a minimum of this but the amplitude or the displacements would be as large as in this case again at time t equal to 3 by 4 if we keep following the propagation of these waves in this direction and this direction you will see as we argued for this panel in this panel again they are out of phase because this wave has reached this point and this wave has reached this point and therefore they are again out of phase and the displacement is zero and at time t equal to t once again this is repeated they are again in phase and we have large amplitude and large displacement so what is happening we have large displacement zero displacement large displacement but out of phase with this and large displacement again in phase with this so we have loops which travel like this once like this then like this again like this again like this and like this 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 and like i mean you have a loop going like this then no displacement and then going like this this and then the opposite phase and again in the same phase so we have loop going like this take the first loop for example going like this displacement zero 
and like that. So this is how the two waves interfere and form the standing waves. And let me th repeat this process again because I, I there's a lot of confusion among students. So let us repeat this process again. Remember that these are waves progressing in the opposite directions. They have the same frequency, they have the same amplitude, but their direction of propagation is opposite to each other. One is propagating like this, the other is propagating like this. So here again, this blue, see actually two, two must coincide, but just to show that the, the process, I've taken one slightly shorter amplitude than the other. But they have the same amplitude and same frequency. So you see here, the two waves are in phase. They're going in opposite directions, but at a certain instant of time, they are in phase. And therefore, you have this large displacement and large amplitude. Then after some time, they are out of phase, but not completely out of phase. One going this way, the other going this way. And you see the wave formation here. These are some of the two displacements. Here, they have gone completely out of phase. You can see that the maximum of this is at the same place as the minimum of this. And therefore, the displacements are added to 0. Their addition is 0. And therefore, you get no displacement. Once again, they are out of phase. And you get this, not with very large amplitude. but And lastly, they are again in phase. And you have this amplitude, this kind of thing. But this is out of phase with this, because this is time t by 2. And this is out of phase with this. So it again, once again shows, look at this. When this is like this, after time t by 2, this is like this. After time, again, after time t by 2, this is like this, and this is like this. In between, there is a time when there is no displacement at all. So we have a loop going like this, no displacement, and loop going like this. And if, do, if they do rapidly enough, rapidly enough, you will see that you don't uh, get to see the, uh, the time when the displacement is 0. You see just like this, like this, like this, like this. So um, after having explained the formation of standing waves, we take another interesting concept, that of beats. What happens when two waves of nearly equal frequencies interfere? Frequencies are now nearly equal, not exactly equal as in the case of standing waves. Now they are nearly equal. And I've tried to show you this two wave trains with nearly equal frequencies. And you know, somewhere these arrows are exactly opposite. So destructive interference will take place. Somewhere they are exactly in the same direction. So constructive interference will take place and like that. Here, I've shown these wave trains again, slightly differing frequencies. And you can see, sometimes the waves are overlapping. Sometimes they're just out of phase. So the amplitude, therefore, of these waves would go like this. You see here they overlap, so the amplitude is increased. Here in this region, they are out of phase, so the amplitude is minimum, minimum here. In the next lecture, we shall see sound waves are longitudinal waves, and they travel in a certain medium. Here, let me repeat, we have learned two very important concepts. One is standing waves, how they are formed. I have repeated the, this process twice to make it clear how the two progressive waves in the opposite direction give rise to the um, two uh, standing waves. And that the, then the number of beats is equal to the difference of the two frequencies if the frequencies are almost equal. The difference should not be much. At the most, 5, 6 can't go beyond that. So if the two frequencies are, if the waves of two frequencies are overlapping, then the beats will be heard. That is, the sound will go up and down. And this going up is called wax. This is called waning. And we, the number of such waxing and waning would be equal to the difference of the two frequencies. And that the frequency of a wave is a fundamental property of the wave, and it does not change when the wave goes from one medium to the other.